have Parazad here. And I'm going to interview, not you, her. <laughs> I could interview you if you want me to at a later date. It's been very Dora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Do you like belly dance? <laughs> Say belly dance! So what possessed you to start belly dancing? What could have ever possessed me? So a lot like what you talked about, I was really into Middle Eastern and Silk Road cultures. One of the things that really got me though, aside from typical I dream of Jeannie, because hello, I'm an American with boomer parents, was a local Indian restaurant to our hometown. It's called Molly's. They have a mural that's like, it takes up the entire wall. And it's of a it's of an Indian wedding procession. Now the history nerd in me wants to say that it's a Mughal wedding procession, but I don't know that for sure, so I'm not gonna say it. It's just stunning, and it's done in a very classically Indian art style as well. And I've been going there since I was four years old. I am almost 30 now, so I have spent countless hours staring at this mural, and that was honestly one of the main things. That I dream of genie. And Aladdin were probably like what really got me going on this but how I got started in belly dance is I'm a very contrary child. I wanted to learn how to belly dance. My mom said no that's for college girls because she had a lot of the connotations around belly dance that a lot of westerners have. So she's like no it's for college girls. I went to high school back when you had senior project which was basically them wanting you to develop a life skill and learn how to do a research paper and speak publicly about it. So we went to the meeting for senior project and they said, you have to learn a life skill. It can be anything. It can be wood cards. You could be working on a car. It could be dancing. I'm like, dancing you say? So basically I decided that I was gonna make belly dance my senior project. So that way, not only did mom have to let me do it because it was for school, she had to pay for it <laughs> because it was for school. And that's how I met this lovely lady. So, you did this for a senior project, mm -hmm. and how did that go? How did the senior project go? Senior project went really well. I got graded really well on it, um, and definitely developed a life skill. I've been doing this for almost 13 years now. And I also, because of that, got really good at speaking about belly dance to people who aren't part of the culture, who you know have certain preconceptions about it. I actually used a lot of different projects that I used in college. I would just speak about belly dance, because. It was easy, I didn't have to do that much work. But then also because I like to spread the gospel. <laughs> How do you think that uh, feminism relates to belly dance? It's interesting. I mean, as you've been hearing with Black Lives Matter, you know, black people are not a monolith. Belly dance is not a monolith. Right. One of the things that you talked about in your interview is that Western dancers really like to tack on their own sensibilities to the dance. Faiza and I are not, and most of the dancers that we know are not sex workers, but there may be belly dancers who are sex workers, and that's fine. Faiza and I believe that feminism is your right to choose, and belly dance does that. One of the more typical, I am strong, I am invincible, I am woman, aspects of belly dance, I would say would be the fact that we strive to be. We strive to be such an inclusive group. While maybe for Western sensibilities, dancers of different body types might not be marketable within belly dance, girl, sign up for your slot at Cairo Shimmy Quake and we will cheer for you just as hard as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I have loved as somebody who started at 17 and I'm now almost 30. I have gone through various evolutions and fluctuations with my skill and talents. I've gone through various evolutions and fluctuations with my body and I have been loved, accepted, cheered on, and told I was beautiful at every phase. And that's one of the things that I really love about this community. Well, one of the things that I really love about belly dance is that if you're actually doing it, it looks good on every body type. How do you do that gold line in your, <laughs> in your makeup? So I got this actually from a YouTuber named Tammy Clark. She does a lot of really unbelievably beautiful makeup tutorials. And one of the things that she did is that they sell like glitter in a tube now. I got one that's Revlon. On one side, it's like a liquid eyeshadow. The other side is a glitter on a brush. I actually have it here right. on my uh -huh. wing and then I also have it in my crease. Basically I just use a little brush that comes in the glitter thing. I'll show it to you after this. And you just paint it on and then you want it to dry before you do anything else. So paint it on as thin or as thick as you like and then put a hair dryer on your face. 
because otherwise you're going to open your eye. They'll just be crusty and your very specific effect will be do, gone. Will be generalized. It'll just be all over your lips. What hurdles or roadblocks have you had to overcome? Ego. Sometimes it's really helpful. For me, I can't stand being bad at things. So when I get into a dance class and I am not one of the top five dancers in a dance class based on my own estimations, <laughs> as a very competitive person, if I don't judge myself to be one of the top five dancers in the class, I will bust my butt. You saw it when I first started dancing with her. I started out in the teen class. You know, I was definitely one of like the newbie newbie beginners, but she had a teen troupe that were more professional that I wanted to be a part of. And so I worked my butt off. And I think within a year and a half or two years, I was in that troupe. So on the one hand, it's really good because it really motivates me to do things. But one of the roadblocks that have been coming up recently with my ego is that I can see where I am and I see the level where I could be. And because it's easier to just hate on people than to, <laughs> than to do the work. Sometimes it's just easier to not hate on people per se, but like I've been struggling recently with my own ability with a belly dance because, you know, have I had other priorities? Sure, you know, I got a college degree, I studied abroad, I've been trying to get that nine to five working for me. These are all valid or not reasons, mm -hmm. right? But they have taken priority over belly dance. And there are other people who have been dancing for not nearly as long as I have, who have surpassed me far and away, light years ahead of me because they just had a different set of priorities. And that's fine. They put in the work, they put in the sweat equity or sweat equity. They've just put in the time. You can watch as many videos as you like. You can listen to as much a pop in your car as possible, but there is just nothing like sweat equity when it comes to this dance. They've put it in, I haven't, and instead of being like, I should put in more time because it's harder, I just like, maybe I'm just not as passionate about this dance as I thought I was. Maybe I'm just, yeah, yeah, it's fine. So yeah, I think for me, my biggest hurdle has been my own ego. And just being like, I have to drill a hip drop I learned 13 years ago because it's gotten sloppy. What's your favorite? belly dance song that you always want to dance to no matter what and you're always mad if somebody else steals it. Xena, just right off the bat. I don't care how many choreographies I have learned to Xena. I'm we always have one. we have a we have a choreography to Xena. Davila's troop segments has a choreography to Xena and I was as soon as she said like oh we have a Xena choreography I'm like I'll learn that she's like oh do you not know any Xena choreographies? I'm like I know a thousand and there's <laughs> always room for one more up here. Zayna okay. strikes me every time, no matter what. As soon as I hear like some weird thing, I'm like, wait a minute, is this is, is Zayna, no matter what it is. <laughs> just like turn up the radio and then just like a pop blasting out of my vehicles, confusing everybody in what they were burbing. All the Armenians just like, what's going on over what's, there? What's, what's, what? As far as favorite artists, I think for pop, it would have to be Saad and Hakim. And then for just classic AMCAB, my favorite is Eddie the Sheik, Eddie Kochak. He is yeah. fab. We were talking about doing this anyway. So if we're gonna take our like three classic like AMCAB artists of John Belazikian, George Abdo, and Eddie the Sheik, yeah. rank them. For me, oh. it goes, I know, so controversial. <laughs> For me, my preference is Eddie, George, and then John. Oh. I know, blasphemy. I would go, John, George, Eddie. <laughs> or maybe George, John. George is so, oh my God, that voice. Eddie is my favorite. Just love how he, in his orchestrations, will pull various instruments forward. Yeah. For you to emphasize. Yeah, Cause the thing I like that too. Me, as a dancer, I have a very storyteller kind of dance. I love Eddie because he pulls, he, he just, he spotlights instruments so beautifully. And it's one of my favorite things as, a mostly American cabaret dancer and a dancer who has an emphasis on storytelling. Okay, so do you have any uh, horror stories that pertain to dance? That pertain to dance. That you um, like to share. I was dancing an ATS set and we were wearing these costumes that like, we had pants on underneath and we had like the swoopy skirts on over top. The skirts that like, for tribal, they have the panels in front but then they like swoop Oh, well, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So we were wearing those in the middle of the performance. The elastic in my pants 
broke. So then I spent probably half of a 15 minute set with my pants just slowly falling down. <laughs> Sorry, at that's the time, hilarious. It is, it is. <laughs> no, it's it's great because I was I was wearing black boy shorts as my panties. So since I had black pants on and black boy shorts at the time, garter pants were really really in style. So the fact that there was six inches of my milky white thigh <laughs> showing through this skirt didn't throw anybody because my pants were a black jersey knit and my panties were a black jersey knit. And I just like sitting there and you're like, please don't fall down, please don't fall down, please don't fall down. I'm just doing my best to dance with my pants coming down. And so then the set finally ends and I'm like, oh, thank God. So I do like a cute little exit and I run off and I swear to God, as soon as I got out of sight lines, the other dancers are of course, who are about to go on are looking there and about to be like, good job, you were so great. And I just grab my pants and leap up to pull my pants up and that's when they put it together and I think it was Suze who just starts dying laughing because she did not realize that my pants were coming down for a whole set. Wow. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, <laughs> just how weird are you? I would say I'm a seven because I can fly under the radar, not for long, but I can. Like when I'm at a day job and like I'm in a corporate setting, I can absolutely fly under the radar. And I think I come across as like an interesting person because I have- Because you are interesting. Because I have a wide scope of things that I'm interested in. But eventually it slips every time. I study Chekhov, I have a weird obsession with samovars. My theater friends will get it. <laughs> the last time it was at work, <laughs> I've been at this job for like three months. And I'm in the kitchen with one of my coworkers. I don't know if we were talking about true crime. Like, I can't remember how it came up. I apparently had watched Firefly in the last six months. And so while we're exchanging facts, I think she quoted the pig fact from Snatch where it takes like a pack of six pigs a minute to devour a pound of human flesh, whatever. So it's like, oh yeah, you can completely exsanguinate uh, an adult human body in five minutes. And she looked at me, she's like, what? I'm like, yeah. She's like, how do you know that? And I'm like, no, I'm not a serial killer. This was on Firefly. We all know this now. I don't know, because I definitely know people who are weirder. I guess the question is what, how do you define weird? Okay, I can function. Like I can go out in society and like get through my groceries without telling the cashier for 30 minutes about my cat. So like, I would call that a 10 and I am not there. Where do you see yourself? as a belly dancer or in within the dance world or do you still see yourself in the dance world in the next 10 years and if yes how what do you see for yourself mm, 10 years is so long if there's still a dance <laughs> there's still a planet at this point if there's still a dance world to be a part of i think yes i guess i'd be doing this though i feel like i'd probably be in this sort of capacity i'd love to be you know still performing competing professionally. Um, well, start competing. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to be competing professionally, but hopefully I'm teaching and hopefully I'm doing something like this where just, you know, continuing to give dancers a voice, continue to kind of create a safe place for people to discover. What is the number one thing you want dancers to know? I think the number one thing that all other dancers need to know is that we are guests when it comes to Yes. This dance, when it comes to this culture, we need to think of ourselves as being guests yes. at a dinner party at 100%. somebody else's house. If you are a guest at somebody else's house, you would never rearrange their furniture while they're in the kitchen, tell them how they should live their lives, and you sure as hell would not walk off with grandma's Ming Dynasty vase. You wouldn't <laughs> steal things from another person's you house. Yeah, you wouldn't, and then just say, what, this was always mine. Or be like, well, everything else was garbage, but this one thing was great. So I tuck it. Right. Your job is to sit down, be gracious, participate without domineering the conversation, and then leave when asked. Where can we find you? I have a fan page on Facebook. It's Parazod Rocks. My Instagram handle is at Parazod underscore rocks. So we're glad you're here and we hope you're enjoying uh, our show. Uh, please take a moment and hit the like and hit subscribe and we hope to see you every week. This has been Rock Stocks. We put out new videos every Wednesday, so be sure to tune in next time.